basically the way I'm looking at it is this. We are not victims. Uh, we have the power of choice in our life. We have free will. We unknowingly give up our free will a lot of the time because we are stuck in subconscious programs, which were put there a long, long time ago. We why, did, why did you give up the free will? Why did I give up the free will? Yeah, you said when you give up the free will, then you're stuck in the program. Why did you give up the free will? Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't a conscious decision at that moment. No, you were not operating from conscious mind at that moment. <laughs> well, the point is, is that if you can come back into the conscious mind, you can regain the power of choice in your life. Yes. And, and you know, one of the problems with addiction, especially with addiction treatment, uh, in my opinion, is that we think that in, in 30 days of being surrounded by a group and being, you know, one-on-one -on -one therapy that you can get out and return to your environment and return to your old way of thinking and return to the same people you've been with and expect that you can somehow stay sober and show up as a changed person is just a ridiculous idea. Yeah, because, uh, you know, in my, just to give the idea of how a field shapes matter, that's what we want to talk about. A consciousness field is shaping this matter in here, but also around me because of my consciousness. Mm -hmm. To give a simple picture of that, I, in my lectures, I, I show I take a piece of iron in a file, and I file that iron down, I make a pile of iron dust called iron filings, iron pieces from the file. I say, what? I say, put those iron filing pieces in a salt shaker. And I say, now let's sprinkle it on a piece of paper. And you get a random pile of iron filings. And I say, okay, do it again. I get a random pile. Of, and I say, every time you do it, a random pile. Then I say, put a magnet underneath the piece of paper. <clears throat> I say, what's the relevance? Now, when I sprinkle the iron filings, they don't fall randomly. They form this very ornate shape of a magnetic field. There's a shape to it. And every time I sprinkle it, it repeats the shape again. I say, where did the pattern come from? The iron filings? I go, no, the iron filings didn't give the pattern because you sprinkle them alone. There's no pattern. I say, when I sprinkle it with a magnet and now I got a pattern, I say, then it's iron filings plus field gave me pattern with no field, random, okay? <clears throat> so what's the point about all this? And the answer simply is that the world we're living in is like the iron filings. What are you shaping? I say, what is your field? I say, who's generating the field? Well, oh, now there's two sources. Conscious mind can generate a field, which has this beautiful picture of heaven on earth, or subconscious mind can generate the field, which is a replay of patterns of other people's programs that are negative, and then you only see the, the falling of the pattern. You see the result of the pattern, but you didn't see there was a field involved to create that pattern. And that's a field of consciousness. So if you're using the conscious mind, then the pattern of the filings is heaven on earth. If you're using the subconscious program, it's a complement to whatever the program was. If you got a bad program, then you have a bad field <laughs> around you, which is not going to be healthy and happy. And I go, we are not victims. We are creators. But if we have no idea that we had two minds that are operating uh, interdependently, then the reality is we always look at, well, I'm the conscious mind and how come my life isn't working? Then it must not be me because I am the conscious wish or desire mind and it's not working. So I'm a victim. It's, uh, it's interesting as I reflect on my own life and people that I work with in recovery that there's this tremendous gravity to the subconscious, to what we've done before. Like, it's almost like there's such a pull. Uh, our, our laziness or our procrastination, um, default, we, we default back into subconscious rather than use the conscious mind to move forward until we develop that muscle, if you will, of becoming more and more conscious being. Well, it's and a I, practice. I, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a practice. Exactly. Uh, you got to do something, not just think about it. Yep. Not working. I go, it's never going to work if you just do that. You have to yep. do something. Uh, yes. And it, it is a program. And you have to do a practice that in some way changes that program, which is what I'm sorry that you do when I'm talking about you when you should talk about you. <laughs> no, I love you talking <laughs> about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, so, so that's, that's, why, that's why I asked you to be a part of the eight-week awakening. 
Uh, that's why we do the eight week awakening. Um, that is exactly what the eight week, eight week awakening does is to put you into, you know, this is, we're talking about uh, essentially almost 60 days of a process of practice and reflection and community and yoga and meditation and waking up, you know, early to do certain things that help to get you out of the subconscious mind, out of those programs and help you to really work the muscle of consciousness. And I do believe it is a muscle that requires yeah. attention. But, but most important is this, that through the habit of practice, you can rewrite the subconscious program. So I'm not just avoiding my subconscious program, through the practice of consciously engaging myself, that behavior, especially repetition, practice, the, that's one of the ways making new habits, uh, is also translated then from the conscious, which is setting up that program. But through practice and habituation, it becomes a subconscious program. And the beautiful part about that is if you rewire the subconscious, then you can go through your world without even thinking. You could just hang, you could just daydream. And, but if you have the subconscious rewired to manifest your wishes and desires, then you don't even have to be there. You will automatically create wishes and desires because it's automatically creating your life right now, but not necessarily with the programs you want. So your exercises over that time give strength to the conscious mind through habit uh, and working and doing it uh, to then translate that into subconscious. And that's where the problem comes from because the subconscious is a program mind. I said, well, how do you put new programs in? And one of them is practice something, <laughs> just repeat it, and it will automatically do it. And then the point that's, you know, the <laughs> most beautiful point is, well, what if you took wishes and desires from the conscious mind, made that a practice, then it would become a habit of the subconscious mind. I go, so why is that relevant? I say, I could daydream and my subconscious mind's taking me to every place I wanted to go even without paying attention. I love that fact <laughs> because, well, you're being taken there right now by your subconscious, but uh, if you look at it, the program doesn't look that good. That means new program. Mm. Uh, and and mm. if you don't install a new program, you are going to play that existing program. Look, not all the programs are bad. Just bring this up. A lot of people think subconscious is evil. I go, no, subconscious is a hard drive. I go, in your computer, is your hard drive evil? I go, no, it's not. It's a hard drive. I go, the programs you put in can be evil and they can be good. I'll give you a good one. When did we learn how to walk? <clears throat> Excuse me. We, we learned how to walk before we were two. I go, do you ever have to relearn how to work? walk again? I go, you could be 102. You're still using the same program you got when you're two. Those are habits. And <clears throat> the point about it is you can't will it away. Like, okay, tomorrow when I wake up, I'm not going to be able to walk. And I go, you're going to walk because it's built in already, okay? And if you have a bad habit, you can't will it away by saying, I'm not going to do that again. I, you know, I'm not going to, I go, had nothing to do with you in the first place. Matter of fact, <laughs> the only thing I had to do with it is you stopped controlling it and it took over <laughs> and, that, and that's it. So uh, the idea is you can't will it away. You can't say, I'm not going to pay attention to it. I will ignore it. I guess that's not even your choice. Whatever your program is, is not your choice. So, so my, um, <laughs> For those listening, and for those who will be listening, um, my suggestion to all of us, my prayer for all of us, my prayer for me, my prayer for you, let's install better and better programs. Uh, please join us for the eight week awakening. It is Monday. Uh, you may be watching this tomorrow, but it's, it's this week, let's say, and this coming Saturday, we get started at eight in the morning Pacific time. And uh, you can still take advantage of our early bird pricing. Just click the link right here in the chat bar and, and come and join us for this journey. We will install a better program. We're going to upgrade. We're going to upgrade the programming in our subconscious mind. And uh, we're going to work on practices and we're going to be together and do it. And we're going to also have a tremendous amount of fun. And we get to hear from Dr. Bruce Lipton again in a couple of weeks. And I don't know if you know, Bruce, but we have... Um, Dr. Michael, uh, Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith. We have Sadvi Bhagawati Saraswati coming to join us, Anand Mirotra. We have uh, Akka Jackson, Kia Miller, Heather Monroe, and all these just extraordinary people uh, who are interested in helping. I mean, their work in the world is essentially how can we upgrade? How can we wake up? 
And so that's what we're going to do. I, I so appreciate it because the simple the statement we've heard all our lives is still the most powerful, and that is knowledge is power. And if you don't have knowledge, you don't have any power. And most of us walk around being powerless in our world because we don't even know who we are. <laughs> and I go, as we'll talk about in a couple of weeks, just a little hint. I, as a scientist, got here because I avoided spirituality. When I was a kid, there were spiritual people giving me spiritual pontifications. Oh, yeah, spiritual this and that. And I go, but if you look at their lives, you go, they suck. <laughs> and there was a point that I said, their words don't match whatever the hell their life is. And, and, and then I realized science is true on this side of the world. is the same truth on the other side of the world. I said, screw the spirit. I'm going to be a scientist. And, and the greatest joy, which I'm so looking forward to, is uh, telling you about how, as a scientist, I realized the science of uh, spirituality. I wasn't spiritual, but when I saw the mechanism, which I will describe, it was like, oh, my God. And then, I love it, in less than a minute, a whole non-spiritual life, a minute le under, after understanding the cells, one minute. It was like, of course, there's spirituality. I understand that. <laughs> I mean, my whole world went not spiritual, beyond devotion, <laughs> scientifically spiritual in a minute. And it's like, and the result is, which we love to talk about, Tommy, is, yeah, I changed my hell on earth to heaven on earth. And, and, um, and it's not an accident. It's not an accident. There's an understanding that you provide and I want to emphasize and support with mm. some really great science about, yeah, you are spiritual entities coming here to create and you're only creating out a program right now. But if you follow uh, like uh, Tommy's effort is the main, you know, main idea is put a new practice in. <laughs> the old practice is going to repeat itself and repeat itself because it's called a habit. And when you knew, when you learn a new practice, you get a new habit mm. and a healthier one. And so I'm excited. I'm still talking, even though you were trying to close and I'm still talking, Tommy. <laughs> but I'm talking because what, what we, Tommy and I, are, are providing is an opportunity to let you know you are a creator. And if you don't like what you're creating, well, you're a creator, then we can create something totally different. Uh, and uh, there's a science and a practice. I'll give a bit of the science. Tommy will hit you with a practice. And together, I look forward to this, Tommy. It's going to be really great. <laughs> <laughs>